jousting yourselves to come. Um, I um, am going to talk to you for about 15 minutes and walk you through the galleries and maybe try to explain a little bit about my process. Um, the works here in the, in the Athenaeum are primarily two themes, um, two of my favorite passions, leaves, being leaves, and self-portraiture. Um, and the leaves kind of transition beautifully also into the book because they're uh, landscapes. So I thought that um, I would explain to you that the work at this exhibition has been um, created over the last year and a half. And the paintings in this gallery, and pretty much all the paintings that are not self-portraits, are really created with leaves. And I have uh, collected leaves everywhere. I have friends who collected leaves <laughs> everywhere. I am on the leaves when we have a storm. I'm, I'm very excited to go outside and see maybe what the storm has brought down, because often there are leaves that I can't actually access that are really high, so I'm thrilled to find a you know, branch. If they're tree trees, I'm stopping in the car and collecting the leaves, because they really only last, really, unless it's a special leaf, this one can last a little longer, but often leaves only last two or three days, and they need to be supple for me to be able to use the leaf in a functional manner. So once they're dry and crisp, that's the end of their deal. So for me, I actually use them, and of course I save them. I actually actually have paint on them, I save them. I have huge buckets of used and beautiful leaves that look like, um, kind of like still lights. So here is a painting um, where I, I have a passion for this burdock. This is a burdock leaf. And here I've used the layering over a long period of time, this painting had been yellow. And, and the painting starts for me um, very, very light because I've discovered, I've been working for three years in this layering process, and I discovered that as soon as I put a darker color or even just a titch darker, you can lose the painting. And by that I just mean it's, it, it, it's no longer illuminating light, it's no longer allowing light to come from within. And so then I have to start over, it's, which is, you know, for me, if I lose a painting, it's brilliant because then I can attack it as though I don't care, and that's always a great place to be. But as a goal, you know, you don't try to lose them. So I do the dark light. And this one had um, many, many, like, you know, 70 layers, and it was in yellow. And then I became infatuated with this burdock, uh, which is this beautiful kind of soft leaf, almost like a begonia or something. And um, so this one has metallic pigment and the burdock leaf. And the, the process that you can see that they're shiny. And often people would might think it's a kind of a varnish. It's actually an integral part of the process. The piece is built uh, with depth, and I, I work on them flat on a table because it can be runny. And I sort of, within, you might have some leaves, then you might have 10 layers of really, really thinly tinted polymer um, medium, which I um, affectionately call glue. It's a, something I've mixed together, and it's a bunch of different polymers that make perfection. Right? Just glossy, total loveliness. So this is, and, that, and uh, these are the sort of the leaves, and I think that it's interesting to think that I will take paint, uh, and um, I might drip it on top of this, I might dip this in paint, I might do any manner of thing that might make this interesting for me to work with. Um, I might use it lightly, and it's funny because you, if you use it lightly, you, get, you don't have a really linear mark. You don't have a really specific tree mark. You might have just marks. And over the time that I've been working, I've developed um, a vocabulary, and I understand that this leaf, for example, is really waxy. And because it's waxy, it sort of resists the paint. And so that means that it won't really look like a leaf, but it will make marks that might be also interesting. So, um, and so when I think about the painting, I think about the composition of the painting and what is going to make the mark that I need. Often I'm working at 3 in the morning, and the problem with that is it's not a perfect time to go out and get leaves, right? <laughs> it's really kind of not perfect at all. So sometimes I have to say, well, I have, this is what I have, but I want a different mark. So how am I going to make my different mark with what I have? So it's a kind of an interesting process of, you know, exploration. And these pieces, you can see the vertical depth, um, and they are a little less specific than the burdock, although they also have the burdock, um, that big leaf in them. Um, the, my idea really is not about expressing a particular tree, although the titles might suggest that this is 
For example, this is Burdock 2. I tried to title them based on what I used in them, actually, rather than maybe what they look like. So it's about a feeling of treeness, generally speaking, and about the canopy of a tree, and when you look up the movement of the sky and the leaves, and maybe how one leaf interchanges with the other, and what that might feel like. And for me, that's what these are expressing. Um, and that's why the light is so critical, because you have the element of the sky to whatever level, if it's whatever level is available to you. And this painting um, is wonderful, I think, because, and it's, this is the only painting, and it's atypical, it's the only painting that is made with one leaf. Everything has any manner of leaves developed um, in, with the depth. This painting is made with, I call it the Tango Palm, because the Athenaeum had its annual event in September. And I had been working for a year and a half, and I knew that I could get some leaves here and really bring some of my paintings to fruition. Because remember, I'm not trying to do one painting, one tree. So I knew that I needed some new elements to um, express, and I knew that even on top of whatever, I could use these lovely leaves from La Jolla. So I pillaged leaves from the Athenaeum Garden, <laughs> and including the, at the event, they had this brilliant palm, these brilliant palms that just were like this big, right? They were spectacular. And um, so we accordionized it, put rubber bands around it, and um, brought it home, which was really great. And so this painting is the Tango Palm. Um, um, yeah, which is exciting to touch. Oh, it's a huge painting. <laughs> That's the thing. I like to touch them, and I um, think you should too. But <laughs> relationship with my abstracted work of treeness if they were treated in a similar manner. So these portraits have, um, actually, this is a Schminke, a German pastel, which is, I have all, for 20 years been calling it the gold, because it's rather pricey and just beautiful. And so the paper takes that, like it just grabs it and drinks it, whereas the canvas doesn't love it, and it's not a pro it doesn't have the same relationship. So these paintings were built in similar fashion, this way. So you might have the pastel, and that actually needs to be stabilized between each layer. And so I would use this glue, layer by layer, and often very tinted. And um, 
I'm just thinking that. I want to say something else. Hmm. Actually, one of the things that I think is interesting about this interlude of a month during this last year and a half is that I think it changed my expectation for my vocabulary about how I'm dealing with the trees because all of a sudden I was making different marks and really thinking about a different um, content which expanded my vocabulary for the treeness because I then realized that there was I was able to really control and define what it was that I was trying to express. And so <clears throat> I think it's, it's, it was pivotal in that way. And it's been a passion of mine to do um, self-portraits for ever. This is my self-portrait at 45. Because so, Kara was there for my birthday. And that was great. We actually went out that night, the one night we went out. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a brand new book called Dungeon Depths. Two artists explore the self-portrait. That's pretty exciting. It also came out the show. Which brings me to the, um, these are my coup, where my husband is here somewhere. I don't know. Carol the animal right there is an author and a very established uh, creative musician, writer. And he, we lived in Germany for um, a couple of years, and um, he had to drive an hour on the train every day. And so through his train experience, he was noticing the countryside, I suppose, and was making haiku poems. And he made um, four uh, seasons of poems. And um, I chose four poems per season to express in this manner. And it's on the Reeves BFK. Actually, maybe they couldn't, maybe this is the thing they should touch, because they're meant to be touched, right? So I <laughs> just really tactile, and I like it to touch. So but I, you know, having an exhibition at the Athenaeum was really exciting for me. I've been coming here to admire the Athenaeum long. And I love the idea of the art and music library. So as it was whirling around in my head, I, Bill and I decided to do this collaborative process where his poems then were actually placed on to the actual um, paper. So this is called a broadside. So I love it because for a lot of reasons, but it has that shiny appeal. But it also, this is actually letterpress. So um, we also collaborated with Super Session Press in Minneapolis at the Minneapolis um, Center for Book Arts, which is a great place. And they, um, these are lead, lead type things. So one letter, one type. This takes quite a while to uh, manage, which Richard was able to do, which is great. So I encourage you to take a look at this because it really, it has a sense of discovery and it's intimate and um, I felt that it was really nice to be able to touch it. And this one is, um, I, do, I love the way it feels. So I'm very excited about that in the, in the way that the poem kind of dictated. It was interesting to let the poem dictate what I expressed. So I'd like to take you over to the um, rotunda and just show you one more thing. Um, that's a little, that kind of is a bit of a bridge because these are a little bit of an object, it's a book, and the, some of the smaller works um, are sort of created with that intent of objectness. 